Hello everybody and welcome to Double Take, the show where we demolish modern feminism. I'm your co-host Amber Athey. And I'm your co-host Julia Nista. Today we have a couple things to talk about, but the first one is Mark Halpern was recently let go from NBC because he did something kind of creepy. Just a little bit creepy. Yeah. So this guy is accused of pressing his genitals on women mm -hmm. and groping them without their consent and a whole bunch of other stuff. More women have come out since the first report. Um, he's lost a book deal over it. He lost a mini series on HBO. This guy was a regular on MSNBC's Morning Joe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And he decided to do these disgusting things to women. This has been coming out now in the media, a lot in the media, a lot coming from the left, too. I yeah. mean, it's been on both sides. On the right, we had, like, when politically on the right, we had uh, Bill O'Reilly, we had Roger Ailes, and now we have Weinstein, huge Democratic donor. We have this NBC, Mark Halpern. We have Weinstein's brother. And so a lot of these things are disgusting to me, the fact that they're coming out out um, in such a mainstream way. Right, and to me, the thing that's especially disturbing with the guys who are doing this on the left is that there's so much hypocrisy behind it because a lot of these people claim to be pro-women, you know, for women's equality. And Halpern was on MSNBC not too long ago saying what could be worse than Trump's um, P-U-S-S-Y grabbing mm -hmm. comment. Exactly. It's well, this is worse. <laughs> this is definitely worse. Yeah, this is 100% worse. Like, you can't claim moral superiority and make that, you know, your soapbox when you go and do the same thing that you claim that you were so well standing on. So this is Mark Halpern being disgusting, and uh, it doesn't sit well with us. No, not at all. All right, so moving on to our issue of the day. We have the Pentagon issuing a recommendation. This is brand new from, I think, two days ago. They are now recommending that women sign up for the draft. Um, so this is pretty interesting. I know the argument is, well, if you want equality, you got it. Women are now going to have to be sign signing up for the draft. What do you think? Is that a fair this argument? This is insane. No, it's not. No, it's absolutely <laughs> no. not. Oh, the point of war is, especially with the military, is to go into war and to have your best soldiers in order to fight and kill and win over an enemy. And when you, you absolutely cannot do that, when there are, A, biological differences between men and women, it's absolutely, <laughs> you know what, you want to say that? That's fine. We can lose a war the next time. But really what this issue is, is you have, you, you look at, compared to other things as well, compared to the WNBA and the NBA compared right. to the Olympics. You have men's and women's Olympics. You have different levels of, athle of uh, athletic ability between men and women, different levels of, it's, it's a biological difference as well. And so to have women be focused and to conscript them to a draft where they're fighting in combat, when they're fighting on the ground, that makes no sense. No other country in the world wants that to happen. The only other country that might be comparable to this is Israel. But even Israeli state that they don't want women doing uh, combat, doing frontline combat, they don't um, actually have women doing frontline combat. It's very specific. It's specialized. If women want to go into the military, if they want to be in support roles, if they want to have, you know, be pilots, um, do things like that, kind of behind the scenes, have more supporting roles, then that makes sense. But to have them drafted yeah. on frontline combat? I think that's right. And you'll recall when the recommendation first came out for women to be allowed for frontline combat, there was a lot of debate over that as well. And what we realized was that women who are capable of performing that role are definitely the exception and not the rule. Absolutely. Uh, Whereas with right. men, it can easily be, it, they're, they're more focused, more specialized. It's more easy for a man to do that than right. a woman. Right. I mean, just in terms of like brute strength, mm -hmm. men are definitely more suited for doing combat roles. Exactly. It's much more easy for a man to be 250 pounds and to go out and do the job of a soldier than it is for a woman to do that at the same time. It's just, it's physically how we're built. It's testosterone levels of how we're built. It's just how yep. um, we're made. And right. if you you can't distinguish between that then the pentagon is to, to recommend this is outrageous I, yeah I, I agree and I, you know um there was a story that came out a couple months ago and it was i believe the first woman to go through i want to say seals training mm -hmm. and if i'm wrong i'll correct it but Absolutely. it was seals I think training. It was training she was the first woman to go mm -hmm. through and she ended up dropping out because yep. it was too physically demanding exactly um, so 
I and mean, you're gonna put women. You're gonna put women on the front lines of combat. This is this is direct combat with the enemy. Right. This is on. The I mean, ground. if you're hand to hand, the woman's gonna lose pretty much every absolutely, time. Absolutely, absolutely. Ninety nine percent. Absolutely, a woman. You're who's setting be, people up for failure. Yes, and the average the average height for an American woman, I think, is five five. For an American male, I think it's about five eleven. Um, yep. And the weight difference is, of course, going to be extremely different right. as well. And just for so. the record. We are not all about like equality for men and women on every single thing. We nice. recognize that there are biological differences between men and women. Absolutely. I love when men pay for my drinks, don't have a problem with it. So I don't see this position of being against women in the draft hypocritical at all, just for the no, record. It's not, it's, it's, it makes sense when you're treated equally under the law. Right. You're treated equally under right. the law. But for, it's about due process. This right. is a different situation talking about. Mm you know, preparedness for combat. Mm -hmm. It's a completely different conversation. Women are not equal to men in all things, everything, that's certainly not physically. Anyone with eyes can see that. Yep. And so for the Pentagon to make this recommendation makes no sense. Their justification was to add diversity and oh, be Oh, here benefits. we go again. The classic leftist talking point. It was. Diversity is the most important thing, except clearly in this case, in many other cases, it's really mm. not. This makes no sense. And again, the only uh, people tend to compare um, this to the Israeli military, but the Israeli military, anyone in Israel says, oh, well, there are the two reasons why that happens. A, because they're an extremely small country surrounded by lots of enemies. That's why they have to conscript everyone. And B, um, they, they don't want their women to be in there. They're only in there in certain compartments. So the Pentagon, guys, I don't know what you're thinking. I, your, your logic behind this uh, recommendation makes no sense. And we hope that you in the future would not continue to stand by this recommendation. Moving on to our feminist shout out for the day. Um, we always like to end on a positive note because Absolutely. we do a lot of bashing on the show. Mm -hmm. Totally fair. But uh, we have Selena Gomez. She has lupus and she was in desperate need of a kidney transplant. And her friend, whose name is Francia Reza, actually donated her kidney to Gomez. So here's a video of Selena talking about that moment. My kidneys were just done. It was, that was it. And I didn't want to ask a single person in my life. And that was the day I came home when I found out. And she volunteered and did it. You feel that Francia saved your life? Because she did. That's, that's it. This is a true example of friendship. This is a true example of heroism. The fact that her friend was able to donate her kidney, that is putting your life on the line. Um, that's putting, you know, certainly giving a part of you in the most literal sense to your friend. And I think that this woman and, and Selena Gomez as well to come out and be open about, you know, her diseases and such is very strong for a woman to do to come out on a media platform like that. So we congratulate the both of you. Yeah, it's really a inspiring story and also kind of sad that Selena had to go through this. And mm -hmm. um, obviously lupus is a condition where a lot of the, um, sort of details of it aren't right. really fully known yet um but yeah to give your kidney to someone else and then to be left with you know just one and mm -hmm. if something ever happens to her friend then she's going to need a kidney it's certainly transplant. putting yourself at risk right. while also being willing very to give selfless. to your friend very selfless mm -hmm. um so i mean huge shout out to you francia and selena we hope that this will help you live a healthier life in the future mm -hmm. Um, so that is our episode of Double Take for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we hope that you will like, comment, and share, and please join us on the next episode.